Hello again. We're going to be using Element 3D to hopefully save you a little bit of render time. How it could be used to fill in for glass and windows, and also some additional buffers that you may have forgotten to render. Here's the model. It actually started off as something else, but then turned into a Jeep. <laughs> so ignoring that, I'm just going to turn off a couple of layers here. So that's what that looks like just to see inside. And then I'm going to take the windows and I'm going to just copy everything, create a new object, and I'm just going to paste everything in. So it's all on one layer. Pivot point is right in the center. They all still have their surfaces applied. But because this is going into element, I'm going to freeze any of the sub patching that's going on. So control D. I'm also going to hit shift T to triple them. So hopefully that will eliminate any issues in element. I'm going to go to the in out tab. These are my default settings. As I mentioned in a previous tutorial, we're going to have to eyeball this scale, which is a bit of a pain. But other than that, let's go to export OBJ. Now, when you installed element 3D, it will have created its own sort of home directory, as it were. And there's a models folder here. So we're going to put this OBJ, call it Jeep and plonk it in that folder. In fact, I might create a folder here as well, Jeep. So that's it done for Modeler. This is what our scene looks like. We have this wave thing going on that's being driven by various displacements. And we've got our car sliding around in the middle. A couple of shout outs though. Firstly, DB and W for their DB and W tools. I'm literally driving this whole rig by the oscillator node. So it's either sine wave in this case, or just lots of noise. And these are all non-modal as well. And it's so much easier than using textures. So anyway, big shout out to DBNW for those. Second shout out is to OD tools. Anyone who's got this set of tools will appreciate just how useful they are. But in this case, I'm using scene referencing a lot. It basically means I can animate various scenes, bring them together and either tweak them in the original scene or tweak them in this scene and have them all sync. I'll leave a link to the tutorial in the description because it just helps so much with workflow. It also means I can do things like this. So if I enable screen references, I can disable that scene. So that whole wave scene has been replaced with nulls, which obviously makes this much easier to work with. And it just means I can bring it back at any point. For this tutorial, this wave isn't part of what we're doing, so I'm just gonna disable it. We'll take a quick peek at the buffers. As you can see, this is without the windows and it's looking quite nice, if I uh, say so myself. Now with the windows off, we're gonna go and have a look at the direct diffuse. So if I now turn the windows on, I've lost all my interior. And all of that interior is now clumped under the refraction. Even with the refraction index at one, everything underneath the glass is in this refraction buffer, which for one is slightly limiting. And for a second reason, to get rid of this additional noise, we're going to have to up the refraction sample here. So we'll turn the window layer off. We won't be rendering those. So we'll save ourselves a bit of rendering time. But the downside is we've got no reflections of the environment. Again, this is something we can reintroduce in Element. I'm going to bring back in that wave scene and just to refresh, we're going to render everything as is except for the windows, which we're going to do in post. It's time to render out the scene ready for After Effects. I've rendered out my RGBA paths here and created a comp. It's also a shape layer here just for a bit of color in the background. Let's get some deets from layout. So I'm going to need the camera, obviously. So first step is to select the camera, go to the in out tab and send to AE. After a slight pause, that should have done its thing. Now I need to get this car detail through. So everything is connected to this body null, which has additional information on it. But this pivot points in the wrong place. We need the pivot point to be where the model is. So I'm going to select one of the items of that car. So the body, I'm going to select that and I'm going to send that through to AE as well. You can select any of these points so long as that pivot point is where the model pivot point is. Jumping back into After Effects, we can see we have our camera. Now I know that's static, so I'm going to remove all the keyframes from that. And here's our body null, which should nicely follow our car. Now, when you send the camera details through, the comp will have jumped to the camera settings. 
So in this case, I'm at 25 frames a second. So if this null is possibly out of sync with your animation, check your frame rate for your animation. Command option G and change it if necessary. Good, that's the first step out of the way. Time to set up element. Command Y for a solid, let's call it E3D. And let's attach the element 3D plugin to that. That's easy enough. Let's go to scene setup. Okay, we don't have to mess around too much here. We just go to the Jeep. Let's double click on the Jeep, load material. Okay, that. Now it's tiny because it's 100% scale. So we're gonna normalize the size here. That should bring it up so we can see it. And then where it says alignment, we're gonna take from model. So that should bring us up to the origin. So that's, that's looking pretty good. Okay, to that. You'll probably be able to see a little corner piece of it there. The coordinates are slightly out of whack. So if I was to go and put it at zero, 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 that puts me right in the center of the scene. But I need this to marry up with my car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the create group. I'm gonna create a null, a control null, which is basically this here. Let's call it car control. Now with my finger on the shift key, I'm gonna take the pick whip and I'm gonna parent it to the body. So it's now being animated by this null here, basically. So now what I've got to do, which is a bit of an annoying bit, is to scale it into position. And we can only do this by eyeballing it, really. We'll zoom in a bit. We'll take the opacity down to 50%. I have my finger on the command key so we can move in finer increments and we're just gonna marry up the edges. That's pretty good, I think. So now if we hit preview, we should have our Element 3D model moving nicely along with our animation. And it seems to be working very well. So now we could use this as a mat to isolate the calf. So we could quite easily go for a set mat, point at that Element 3D layer, turn that off. And we can now use this Element layer as a render buffer, effectively which is very handy if we forget to render something. But let's get back to our windows. So let's delete that. Let's call this layer all as a safety measure. And then let's duplicate that and we'll call this E3D layer, we'll call this windows. Okay, and we'll turn that on. Okay, so let's set the windows up. So let's go into the scene setup. Let's have a look at the surfaces. Basically what we want to do is we want to use the other surfaces as a mat for the window. There's a couple of ways we could go about this, but this seems to be the quickest because it's quite a simple setup. So let's create a new material and call it mat. So selecting mat will basically load us up in here. We're gonna go down here and all we're gonna do is hit mat shadow. That's basically it. Now we need to get this on every surface except the window. So we could either go here or we could go here or we could drop it here and that will do everything. That's probably the quickest. We just have to remember the one second from bottom is the window. So let's do that quickly. Drag it onto the Jeep and let's go to our window surface and drag it onto that layer there. So that's now using the other surfaces as a mat for the window. So let's style up this window. We'll go to the presets, go to environment. So I'm looking for one with a bit of blue in it just to match the sort of scenery. And I think I'm gonna go for roof blurred. So double click on that. We'll select the window and we'll go back up to reflection. Let's put that hundred percent. I don't think you have to do this, but let's make the diffuse color black. That's looking pretty reflective. Okay. So you can see a little bit of reflection, which is nice. We're gonna change from normal and we're gonna put this on screen. So if we now do a little bit of a preview, you can see a little bit of reflection. Perhaps if we go to uh, render settings, physical environment, rotate environment, we can move that around to suit as well. You can swap this environment out with everything. I've just used the stock one for this. Perhaps we could take this a step further. Let's create an adjustment layer. Let's take the windows and duplicate that. Let's we use that as a mask. Let's add it curves. So 
So that's pretty cool for not much effort. We've got some nice reflections with practically no render time. Since we can, let's take this one step further. So I did a render pass of just the wipers alone. So let's plonk that over the top. So there they are. So my thinking was, well, this looks okay, but it really needs to clear a space where the wiper wipes. Let's do that now. We're back in layout. Let's create a new null and let's call it wipers. And with parent in place off, we're gonna parent that to our window. I'm gonna turn on wireframe for the window, probably front wireframe, there we go. And we're gonna marry up this null with the front of that window. Okay, so there it is. It doesn't have to be fantastically accurate. With that wiper selected, I'm gonna send that to AE and hop back to After Effects. Great, so there are our wipers. Let's turn the wipers off. We don't need to see those. Let's create a new solid. Let's just call this hole. Move the anchor point to the bottom. Turn it into a 3D layer. Again, with the shift key held down, pick whip that to our wipers. We scaled it down and we're only gonna marry up the edges here. So that's pretty good. Take the opacity down and move it below the wipers render. There we go, so now that solid is now following underneath those wipers. Now all we have to do, you guessed it, is mask out this particular path of the wiper. There's gonna be a bit of guesswork involved, so let's lock that, let's double click on this layer and mask out our little path. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, now this hole I'm gonna use as a mat for the window. We could go on anything really. So let's move it above the window and let's set the track mat to alpha invert. There we go. Let's make sure I'm at 100%, which I'm not. So that'll help. So I've got a nice clear window now around that area. So that's it, we're there. Use any of those surfaces in the Element 3D layer as mats to color grade or do whatever you will with. Hopefully I will speak to you again soon. <laughs>